In this video, I'll discuss lens corrections, camera calibration, and special effects. Double-click image 1079 in Bridge to open it in Camera Raw. This image has already been developed, refined, and its detail attended to. Next, let's go to the Lens Corrections page, and its icon is a camera lens in cross-section. Go to the Profile tab and check to enable lens profile corrections. Look carefully at the image before and after. The perspective is subtly shifted when we enable lens profile corrections. Now look in the corners of the image before, after. Before they were darker and after the corners are brighter. This is called vignetting and it's something that's inherent in all camera lenses. The way that this works is it looks up the lens profile for this particular camera lens. In this case, it's a Canon PowerShot S100 point and shoot. This particular camera was brought into the lab and it was characterized. And this profile corrects for the distortions inherent in that particular camera and lens. Right down here, we have the correction amount. You can dial this back all the way to zero if you like and it doesn't do any correction. You can even go beyond 100% if you want it to continue correcting in that same way. In this case, I'll leave it right at 100%. And similarly with vignetting, you can go back down to zero, up to 100, or even beyond if you don't think that the vignetting was corrected quite properly. Next, go to the Color tab. You also have the option to remove chromatic aberration and this is the color shifting that happens. And this is, again, characteristic of all camera lenses. To see this, let's zoom in to 100% up here on the edge of the roof. You can see a color cast all the way along this edge. And if we check to remove the chromatic aberration, that's almost magically removed. Go to the Manual tab and zoom back out by double-clicking on the Hand tool to see the whole image. You can click the A button to apply balanced perspective corrections. It's going to analyze the image in perspective and make a best guess as to what the image should look like if it were corrected so that the perspective lines are horizontal and vertical. The Adjacent button applies only the level correction. This button does level and vertical, and this button does level, horizontal, and vertical. It's a question which one of these looks best for the building. Is it A or is it full? I'm going to go with full. I'll check show grid down here, and you can adjust the grid size. And in some cases, you might want to rotate the image. I'm going to look here at the outer two columns here and see if I need to rotate it so that those are vertical. I think it looks pretty good at zero. I'll turn this off. Now if you want, you can also adjust these transforms manually to shift the perspective. I prefer the image with it rotated a bit in the vertical. Then go ahead and crop the image with an aspect ratio of 1 to 1 so that you have a square. And drag the square so it's more or less centered on the building. Press Enter to perform the crop. Next up are camera calibrations. You can choose from this list of camera profiles and each one of these shifts the color very slightly. And I recommend that you go through them all and see which one you like best. In this case, I think I like the camera neutral best. You can also shift the color channels. Try increasing the hue here in green so that the green shifts a little bit.
increase the saturation. And what happens is this golden statue appears more gold before, after. We can also get a preview by checking this button, before, after. Finally, go to the effects page. You have the option here to add grain as if this were a film photograph. You can adjust the size, the roughness. It gives it a retro look. Down here you can apply post-crop vignetting. So I've already cropped the image and I can add either a bright area or a dark area along the borders of the image to accentuate this retro appeal. And then you can work with these sliders to see just how much vignetting you want to subtly draw the eye's attention to the center of the image. And again, these are entirely optional. And I would only use these if I was going for kind of a postcard look. But the camera calibration and the lens corrections are something you can do in every image.